Thanks, everybody. Welcome to Build. I'm your host, Ricky Camilleri. Dan Fogler is probably best known for his hilarious roles in Take Me Home Tonight, Balls of Fury, and Fantastic Beasts. But the man is also an incredible comic book writer, and he's here today to talk about his new graphic novel, Brooklyn Gladiator. Please welcome Dan Fogler. Let's hear it. <laughs> sure. <Ow! laughs> Look at this. Look at that, man. That is nice all blown up Beautiful. like that. Beautiful. How ah. long have you been working on this? Long, long time. Um, I mean, it's been germinating in my head since the early 2000s, and then it started really coming together, I guess, the year before the recent election. <laughs> and... <laughs> and <laughs> We're all going to die. Oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> and he's just... Oh, no, I can't go there with that. That's why it's cut off there. You can't really tell which finger that is. <laughs> What, uh, talk about how the recent election in inspired this. Right, well, I grew up in New York, um, and uh, I saw the headlines of, um, you know, about the current POTUS growing up, and I thought to myself, even back then as a child, I was like, man, if, if this guy ever ran the country, it would be like we were in a sci-fi movie. Right. Ta-da! <laughs> It'd be a little like uh, Mike Judge's movie, Videocracy, right? It feels a little oh, like that. Yeah, I didn't see that one. Um, yeah, I mean, it's if like you... a pro wrestler running running the show. Yeah, that's an interesting analogy right there. And uh, yeah, and it wasn't didn't he didn't the current uh, POTUS uh, wasn't he on WWF? I believe he has done made a few appearances. Think about that. <laughs> Apparently, that's what some people want. I guess so. They relate to it. It's a I guess it's, um, yeah, it's it's definitely an interesting reality show. You know, I'm doing this with uh, Chapter House. Mm -hmm. These guys are from Canada. Uh, Jay Baruchel, who's my buddy. <laughs> and, uh, you know, they, I've been talking to these guys and, and also been spending a lot of time outside of the country shooting Fantastic Beasts in the UK. And... Um, you know, and, and the guys in Canada specifically, specifically, they're like, yeah, we, we watch the news like it's the most hilarious uh, reality show ever created. That's how they watch the news uh, about what's going on over here to give you an idea about what their thoughts are. Do you ever want to say, well, guys, you know, the States isn't that far away. The nukes aren't going to drop that far from you. <laughs> like, yeah. you, should, you should take it as seriously as us, Canada. Yeah, I guess so. No, maybe they, I don't know. If they they have their own plans. Let's not worry them. Yeah, yeah. let's not go there, man. I mean, <laughs> let's keep it entertainment. Ah, it's fun to talk about the apocalypse. So you started thinking about this dystopic world that takes place in uh, twenty. Is it twenty thirty three? Excuse me. Did I did I forget? Yeah, it's twenty thirty three. Right. Um, basically, all that has been predicted to happen, or between now and twenty thirty three, has has sort of happened. All of the. Yeah, it was kind of like, what if? Yeah. You know how volatile things are right now. Yeah. You know, the weather, politics. Um, it just feels like we're on, everything is just unhinged. So, But also in limbo, too. Like, yeah. we're waiting for the real thing, real, like, nut to crack. Yeah, this, this Brooklyn Gladiator was like, what if every conspiracy theory is true? Yes, you know, this is, uh, the, the government is unraveling. Everything is going to hell in a handbasket. And um, it is a reality show to keep us occupied while other nefarious things are going on. So in Brooklyn Gladiator, what's happening is, is there is um, a change in the energy in the solar system, okay? Um, the sun is starting to leak out. You, know, you, know, you find this out much, much later. Um, but the sun is leaking out this core radiation that it does every like 36,000 years, right? And um, there's a correlation with the, the bumps in human evolution. Every time this core uh, radiation comes out, we have a little spike in the evolution. Um, and America um, is, in a, is on the inside scoop with that. So they want, of course, keep the, those that are in charge want to keep the status quo. So they're doing everything possible to to keep things the same way and what's happening is that this there's a blossoming in evolution and it's coming out in um 
uh, this psychic awakening. So our main character, this guy, is like this, you know, uh, underground death match cage fighter. On the outside, he looks like, you know, he's just a, he's definitely an homage to the 90s, you know, uh, <laughs> action stars that we love. But on the inside. Like the Schwarzenegger, Kurt yeah, Russell style. Exactly. Yeah. Um, and, but on the inside, he's having this real spiritual psychic awakening. Um, and so the government is doing whatever they possibly can to, to dampen this in the civilians, um, with tech, with super drugs, uh, just trying to keep them occupied with something else while other nefarious things are going on. And our guy, John Miller, he has rejected it. And he's a lot like Neo, who has the splinter in the back of his mind, like, Things are redacted. This is, right. we're not being told the, the whole story here. He finds his way out of New York, out of America. And um, John Miller's also such a great 90s action hero yeah, right. name. Yeah, John McClane. Exactly. Like exactly. Yeah. And so he makes it out uh, to Canada because that's where he was born, Toronto. And he gets there and he realizes, whoa, the whole rest of the world is very much mired in a very technical sci-fi, futuristic, World War III. Nobody inside America has any idea what's going on. And there is this real psychic awakening. Kind of like Akira. I loved Akira growing up. And you have all of these, these um, kids, teens, who start just blossoming with these psychic abilities and it comes in waves. And It's, it's definitely an homage to that. To how did you what did you pitch this to Chapter House? Like where how did you sort of get this thing right. going and where was the idea when you first started getting it going? Had you already written all of it before you brought it? Well, it was an easy pitch um because I had I had written uh volume 0 to try to sell it. So it existed before um and this volume 0 has been extended to 100 pages. There's a lot more um, art in it, and there's design work, and there's actually a sneak peek into volume one, uh, which is Simon Beasley art. I don't know if you guys, this is, the, the cover is Glenn Fabry, okay? This guy, he did the covers for The Preacher, and I don't know, you know, that's, that, as a comic book reader, that just was like, oh my God, I got that guy for my book. And now, and Simon Beasley is gonna do volume one, it's just, he did Lobo, and I, I grew up with these guys, so. Very happy. Um, so anyway, so volume zero was like a pitching tool, and I sent it around, and everyone said, oh, great. I was like, yeah, read this. Do you like this universe? Um, I have Simon Beasley, Ben Temple Smith, all these guys want to jump on board and do arcs for me, and we want to make this whole like legendary Brooklyn Gladiator character. They're like, great. Go off and spend another, you know, hundred billion thousand dollars to make a, you know, to do all that, and then come to us when you're done. So I was like, oh God, uh, all right. <laughs> so, you know, it takes a long time and uh, to make books and to raise the money, and and I got a family, man. So there's a lot of, there's like a list of things, you know, before I can start, you know, putting money toward this stuff. So Jay Baruchel, who's my buddy, I I did fanboys with him. Uh, he said, "Hey, I'm, I'm, I'm gonna be like uh, the creative uh, officer, chief creative officer at, at Chapter House now." And they, he, they said, "Open the doors to your friends and see if they have anything." And I've been telling him about this for a long time. And he said, "Yeah, send that over." And so their their editor looked at it and we're like, "We love this. Like right now, as it is, let's print this." So this is this, which was just a like a. You know, a preview into the universe. It's, it's, you know, it's, it's complex. It's very. I put a lot into it because I really wanted people to know what I was getting at here. Um, How do you talk to the artists to to sort of make sure that, like, I'm sure this. I mean, how much of this is the artist versus like your instruction? Well, I think there's always, yeah, there's always um, a filtering process because you can put everything like. This is my baby, and I describe yeah. I describe the hell out of it <laughs> for the the people that you're passing it on to. Um, but you also have to say, you know what? They they are coming at it 
with their skills and their talent, and you just have to let them feel like they can play. Is it a collaboration, or do you pass off all the descriptions and then they draw what they draw, or yeah, do you, you go back and forth? Hopefully it's a collaboration. Um, that's the best case scenario, where you, you write out your script with all the panels, how you see it in your head, and then you hope that they're gonna take, the artist is gonna take it to the next level, they're gonna see something you haven't. And then sometimes, um, they're just not seeing it how you would see it, so you go back a couple times to each page until you get it right. Um, and then sometimes if you're working with someone like, like a master, like Simon Beasley, uh, you say, um, yeah, that's not exactly what I wanted, but that's awesome, you know, right. just keep going, you know. Uh, so the, Never in my wildest dreams could I have pictured something this good. Yeah. So please, go ahead. Please. Yeah. So that's a, that's a good problem to have. I just can't stop looking at this thing. I love it. What do you guys think of this image? What, is it, what does it say to you? It's cool? Makes you want to buy this? Good. <laughs> that is what I intended. What are the comics that you, uh, that you grew up on when you were a kid reading? Right. So, like, the first comic that I ever picked up was um, uh, Heavy Metal Magazine. Mm -hmm. Which Kevin Smith says this is very much a, right. a reference. He says this, this is full Heavy Metal Magazine. Yeah, Kevin Smith, who has become a real, just like a... Like a like a guardian angel, like an angel in my life. This guy has just like been so cool. Um, he um, did the forward for the book, and it's really nice. It's like one of the nicest things anyone's ever said. Yeah, it's very sweet. Me. It's really sweet. Um, and he's he he. I have this podcast called the Dan Fogler 4D Experience Podcast. Um, and he hooked me up with my sponsor. He like made it legitimate. He said, "Yeah, we know the 4D people." And now they're they're our sponsor, you know. It's it's um, so we're we're real fans of Kevin over here. Uh, yeah, there's a lot of cool people involved in the book. What was the question again? Who are your influences? Who did you grow so up? So I grew up, yeah, heavy metal, which is and my other book, Moon Lake, is also you know an homage to heavy metal anthology short story freaky tales. Um, I grew up watching. Uh, um, you know, the movie, Heavy Metal, the movie, so that had, like, a real influence on me. Um, and I thought, man, why don't they make a TV show out of that where you have an anthology, but you have a narrator, which is the Loch Nahr, mm -hmm. you know, which, which ties everything together. I thought that would be such a cool way to tell a story. So that's basically Moon Lake. Um, Moon Lake is a book. Have you pitched Moon Lake as a series where you have? Yeah, we're working on making it a TV oh, show. Cool. So knock on wood, that'll be a TV show. Um, and then, uh, yeah, we got, uh, so, so this, I, I, I loved Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles when I was growing up. I was like one of the original fans of that. I was drawing Raphael on my notebook before anybody knew who the heck that was. Um, and I love Wolverine and Punisher and Batman, of course, you know, all the, all the mainstream stuff. And, I, and the X-Men, I love the X-Men. Um, and I read Watchmen, and that really blew my mind. That, that, like, that was like, wow, this is a complex comic book. This is Watchmen kind of changed it all for comic yeah. books, right? Yeah, because it also got into something that I love, which is conspiracy theory. Yeah. <laughs> and, uh, and so you branch off into... Um, uh, League of Extraordinary Gentlemen. He gets into the goes down the rabbit hole even further with that, mm -hmm. in such a great, fantastical way. Um, and yeah, love Alan Moore, Grant Morrison. Like any time Grant Morrison. I guess we're t we're talking about more recent stuff, but yeah, yeah. I grew up on um, heavy metal. Heavy metal magazine yeah. was my favorite. Talk about this podcast you have, the 4D experience, and uh, yeah. your, you know, uh, where this came from. So, um, I don't know, what you guys know what 4D movies are? Yeah? So, 4D is um, basically, the, basically the seats move, mm -hmm. there's wind, there's smoke, you feel like you're immersed into the movie. 
Is there scent too? Yeah, they'll throw a little bit of scent at you. You know, I like to turn the water off. There's water. You don't know where that's coming from. You know, it's just been sitting up there. But uh, you know, um, but it's cool. It's not for everybody. It's for those people that like that like a ride. You know, that like a that like a roller coaster. Um, How much do they move? A lot. Really? Yeah. Yeah. Who here has it's done not- that? You have, so you know. You when you're the Millennium Falcon's going, and you are feeling the G forces, right? It's not just like a, a little shake or anything. It's you got like, a little buzz. It's actually kind of like swooping a little bit. Oh yeah, oh, wow. pitch, flow jerks you around, man. Wow. Yeah, you feel like you're in it. And if you're like, like I just saw Ready Player One, and that is the whole concept of the movie is. You get you you go into the oasis and and you feel the buzzes and the and the you it's like you're there, so then imagine, on top of that, your chair is also moving during that incredible uh, race at the beginning. Like you you just feel like you're in it, and so I was inspired. I saw one of these movies. I think um, I think Fantastic Beast probably was one of the first forty X movies I saw. And I was like, man, I want to talk about this. I think it's the wave of the future. I feel like because they want to bring people to the theaters, you know, it's it's hard to get people to come to the theaters anymore. So they're they're really making an event out of it. I'm like addicted to it. I love it. I'm, and I've been I've been getting people to come. Uh, I sometimes like uh, I, I saw Ready Player One without the 40x. I was watching it, and I, and I was just imagining, man, this has got to be so much better with the 40x, you know. Um, and the movie was great, but I, I just like I was like, wow! Imagine you were like shifting feeling, around yourself. Yeah, like, exactly. To, like, move the seat. Like, get that little phantom like thing going on. The little buzz, you know, like, oh, come on, give me that 40x. Uh, yeah, I, I, I kind of, I'm, uh, I'm, I long for it. <laughs> So do you get people together and you guys talk about what it was like seeing a... Uh, yeah, not just kinda, that. We talk gets, about... I mean, it branches off of that. Yeah. We talk about 40X. But then it gets kind of tangential and then we talk about, about movies. Yeah, we talk about all movies. Like, we had a whole Kubrick, oh, wow. you know, uh, what's your season. Favorite, what's your Kubrick movie? What's your favorite? Shining. And by the way, yeah. <laughs> Ready Player One. Right, yeah. Holy. I went to the premiere, and there was, like, people started applauding during that part because it was just such a great recreation. Uh, the comedy in that is great. So I love that. Um, I think the comedy in like all Kubrick movies is super undervalued and people don't recognize. Like, well, you have yeah. to watch them multiple times to get sort of a how funny. <coughs> like even Barry Lyndon, which is like a four hour epic, is a, is a s- satire. <laughs> I guess so. I can't get through that one. Oh, I love that movie. Yeah, it's a long one. Yeah. Um, uh, yeah. It's about an arrogant ass always getting his ass handed to him. Like, every other scene, he's just making right. a fool of himself. Yeah. I mean, th- there's a whole conspiracy that connects that movie to The Shining, to the moon landing. You know, oh, this, really? Yeah. I, I know the moon landing. Yeah, go landing. down that rabbit hole. I know the Kubrick moon landing yeah. conspiracy, right? Yeah. Like, he was, they say he's someone, someone says that he directed it or something like that. Yeah. Many people do. Yeah. Right. Is that in that Kubrick movie, Room 220? You got it, that documentary, yeah. 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 Uh, what, else do you, what, do you, what else do you guys talk about on the podcast? We talk about everything. I mean, we kind of talk about the, cur- the current events, you know. Um, and, you know, we go off. We, I got a lot of stories about behind the scenes, what it's like on set, and funny stories about people I've met. It's that kind of thing. Yeah, I got you it. You know? Um, and it's, on, it's available on iTunes. People can hear it on iTunes. Yeah. 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 And it's Brooklyn Gladiator. It's available now, right? In stores? It's on stores. It? It's on stores. On top of the stores. You yes. can go to the rooftop. Uh, it's in a- stores now. It's on shelves. April 11th. Go get one and tweet at me and at Mr. Dan Fogler and tell me what you think of it because I want to know. Absolutely. Let's get some questions from our audience. Who has a question? Hey. Um, hey. Hey. You know what I'm going to do? I'm going to take my jacket off because it's spring out. <laughs> <laughs> you like that? Go ahead, ask your question. Hey, Dan. Uh, so I, I just picked up the book at Forbidden Planet uh, just a, few, a little while ago. Uh, hey, man. How you doing? Uh, I, was, I saw that there's an intro from uh, Kevin Smith in the book. Uh, do you know him? Are you, 
how long have you known him? And he's he's written some comics also. Uh, did you talk yeah. about like writing comics with him at all? What was the last part? Did have you, you talk to him about writing? writing comics? Yeah. Um, yeah, he. I've been a fan of his for a while from movies that he's done. Um, he's become, like I said, like a really like a really cool mentor um, in the comic book realm in the in the podcast realm uh he was really cool to me um he set me up with the 40x sponsor you know so he didn't have to do that he's like he's just like this really really cool um supportive creative guy he, and he didn't have to be like that and he was and i, and I really appreciate that and yeah i want to i definitely want to collaborate with him in the future on film on comics, all sorts of stuff. Yeah. Next question, right here. Yeah. Hi. Um, hey. <laughs> uh, first off, I totally agree with you uh, with the 4DX experience. Um, yeah. I was so close to rewatching Ready Player One in that format, but I already have tickets to Avengers, which is already like too much money for for the entire experience, but it's worth it. Okay. Uh, <laughs> Um, I was one. I was wondering. Um, I actually have something fun for you then. Oh, okay. Where'd my? Who has my uh, backpack? Does Christina have my backpack? Someone have his backpack back there? Yeah, I what's got your, some. What's your question while we wait? Yeah, go ahead. <laughs> um, I was wondering uh, what are other um, upcoming movies uh, in the 40x format that you right. would love to see? Um, my, I'm most excited for Solo mm. because. Um, I love Star Wars <laughs> and Han Solo, obviously. And it's just crazy. This is, this is great. I have 40X tickets that I'd like to give oh to you. Because they are expensive. Um, but, well, yeah, how many people are here? Including me? Yeah. Um, <laughs> yeah, I'll, 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 give that, I'll give these out to you guys at the end. And uh, you'll get one each. <laughs> That's it. And uh, yeah, what I'm a, glad I brought those. What a surprise! You left them in your backpack. <laughs> I always have them with me. It's really funny. It wasn't even like a, it doesn't seem like it was a thing that you were planning to surprise. I wasn't. You're like, oh, oh, wait, I have like a bunch of tickets to get. No, it's totally Hold spontaneous. <laughs> Just like my schwitzing right now. It's to totally spontaneous because I know they're expensive, but they give me these tickets for free, and I'm not gonna be able to, to use all of them, so I would love to share it with you guys. It's so and, nice. Yeah. Um, I think we have time for one more question, and your question should start with a thank you for the ticket. Well, <laughs> thank you very much. Yeah. Um, my question is, I've read so many comic books throughout the years, but I realize that I have no idea what a comic book script looks like. So what okay. was your process like when you started writing? Right, a comic book script. Well, it's kind of like, um, well, I have the book right here. So it's, <laughs> it's uh, and maybe some lucky people will, I only have a couple copies here, because I'm signing it Forbidden Planet today. Uh, here, here they are right here. Um, I'm signing at, um, from five to six today at Forbidden Planet just up on Broadway. And um, so uh, the, um, the script, <laughs> sop up all this. Uh, the script, so if I show it to you like this, here, come up here, man, so I can see you. Okay, this is like a TED talk. <laughs> okay, so when you write the script, when you write the script, it's just like, have you ever wrote a, um, you ever wrote a, uh, like a movie script or something? Yeah. Okay, so it's, imagine now having to convey about five pages of information in one page, right? So you're just, it, it, it's a lot like making a storyboard, right? You're trying to tell a lot of information from panel to panel. So that's why they, they kind of go in hand in hand. You know, if you're already, if you're already know the the movie making process then you can make you can make comic books right now do you describe what's happening panel for panel or do you describe sort of just what's happening on the on the page yeah you give a um yeah just like a movie you you give a description of what's going on here you want this man sure. um i'll sign it for you in a minute um 
So, uh... Full of goodies today. Yeah. Well, I'm doing the signing today, so... Really I, nice, man. No one ever does that. Thank uh, it's you. my pleasure. Um, and, uh, so... Yeah, you, you... The panels are the most important thing. Just, just... And you don't want to put too many panels on the page. There's, everyone has their own rules. Some people just put as many... Like, there's this book out there called East of West... It's like they can put whatever panels they want. It's just like so delicious the way they, the thing flows. Um, I, I do maybe like five or six panels a page. I feel like that it's not too cluttered, and that's how artists like to work mostly. Um, yeah, it's all about breaking down uh, your moments, just like in a script, in a, in a film script, where you describe the interior and just give a little sense of the the feeling of what's going on in the room. You do the same thing for each panel, and you really just try to, to help the artist give them as much information as possible without being like so OCD about it. You wanna be able to let them play to and add as well. It's like any creative process where there's a collaboration, yeah. It's like directing actors as well. Exactly. You wanna like give them as much as they can to create on their own, but without giving them anything that inhibits them yeah. or makes them feel closed off. You got it, you, 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 you're an actor as well. No, I've seen the, pro I've seen the process. Gotcha. And when and a director gives a direction, you can see immediately an actor go. Right, or yeah. line reading or something, yeah. yeah. Like be more angry, and an actor just go, F fuck. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> or be less angry, and then they're like, less? Yeah. How do I do a less? Oh, my God. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I mean, sometimes less is more uh, with direction. So. What's your favorite direction to get from a director? That was so great. Far, Good job. <laughs> yeah, that was the greatest moment of my life. I, uh, the best direction, well, I guess I could talk about... <laughs> Fantastic Beasts, okay? David Yates made such an incredibly delightful um, playing ground that was just felt like very, it didn't feel like a huge movie, you know? Um, and he was always very calm and he always talked like this. And, and but he was always like very excited, he's very excited. <laughs> and, and, he, and, and so he would let me play, basically. And um, he would come up to me and he'd, he'd say, uh, He'd say, um, yes, yes, Fabby, Fabby. He always say, Fabby, I love that, I love that. It's great, I love it, I love it. Do it again, but take it down 80%. <laughs> and then he'd just run off, you know, and just be like, damn. 80% is actually, that's a lot, man. Well, 80% is actually like a great number because it doesn't mean don't do it, but it right. does. <laughs> right, exactly. Right? Like, it, means, so, <laughs> it, doesn't, it, it doesn't make your brain go, stop doing what I've been doing. Right. It makes your brain tell yourself, just 80%. Just a little bit of it. 80%. Well, I guess I just won't do it. <laughs> exactly. Uh, no, he just wants a little bit of it. Um, and, it, you know, he was mostly right all the time. He, he uh, so... I, I like that. I like kind of, you know, shooting for the <laughs> shooting for the moon and then having them, <laughs> you know, pull me back. Uh, that's that that seemed like it was doing okay for me. Um, it's tricky, man. What's the toughest direction you've ever gotten, or the the most the one that hurt you the most in the moment? Oh God. If you can't, if you don't want to, I mean, I understand if that's like a nightmare to go back to. Yeah, let me think here. <laughs> Um, Names aren't necessary either. Right. Course. Yeah, I guess, uh, I guess, uh, you know, I once, I had this director, I almost, I almost like, I was like, what is going on? Like, what am I doing here? I had this director when I was coming up, uh, it was an independent film. Dude was, <laughs> dude sat all the actors around and then read the script like we were kindergarten kids. Uh. And, but it was just like, he was like, we never, and I, I, I pretty much halfway through after everyone's just sitting there like, what? <laughs> like, what's going on? <laughs> halfway through, I was like, oh, he doesn't know what he's doing. Yeah. He's the kindergarten kid. <laughs> and he's just trying to make it look like, yeah. you know, he's the, the leader here. He has no clue. And he had no clue. Did you sit through the whole thing or did you put it, did you? I, I, I'm the kind of person who you, right away, you know what my emotions are. Like, if I'm having a good time or a bad time, I was just like, 
I just couldn't believe it. I just couldn't believe it, man. I was like, really? It was just so patronizing. So you guys knew what an interior is, right? Oh, God. Okay. I was just like, what? Do you oh know what God. an interior is? Yeah. That's, that's, the, worst, that's the worst I've, <laughs> I, I think I've ever heard. Do you like my R2-D2 socks? <laughs> yes, <laughs> me too. <laughs> Awesome. So innocent, the way that you just... <laughs> I saw them in my periphery. I was like, I got to say something now. <laughs> Do you like my R2-D2 socks? <laughs> uh, Dan, Fantastic Beasts, uh, number two is coming out in November, right? Right. Can we call it number two? What is the actual title? Excuse me. Yeah, no, just say Fantastic Beast 2. That's fine. Part or, two. Or, or Fantastic Beast: The Crimes of Grindelwald. That's a good one. <laughs> Brooklyn Glass. Why was that funny? Did I miss it? did I say that weird? No. Why was that funny? And Brooklyn Gladiators on shelves now. <laughs> you guys will tell me later. It's on shelves now. On 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 stores now. <laughs> it's me. on, on top store. of the store. On top of the stores. You got to climb to the roof of Forbidden Forbidden Planet for yes. the signing and get a book. And, uh, and your podcast is on iTunes. It is Dan Fogler's 4D Experience podcast. There you are. Dan Fogler, everybody. Ow!